the original CS5 did not have a mouse. This meant that you had to position the cursor keys up and down on the stave in order to actually enter notes. Then all you had to do was enter a rhythmical value and press the return key repeatedly. At first it goes quickly, but as it reaches the end of the screen, things begin to slow down. And obviously entering so many notes can actually be quite tedious, but um, can be therapy too. There is a copy and paste function, but in this video I couldn't remember what that was. You will notice that at the bottom of the screen, you're able to choose the actual rhythmical values, but it's not limited to just that. You can actually change whether a note is sharp or is flat, and you can also enter the dynamics from here, which we'll see later on. You have to keep in mind that at the time when this was done, the actual hardware sequencing options were quite limited. Most hardware sequences were built around a different type of music. Even though this might seem like a really primitive way of doing things and a quite hard way of doing things, it provided a creative avenue in order to actually put musical ideas down. At the end of the four bars, we enter a loop sign and then return to the beginning to add the loop, begin, and how many times we want that to actually reiterate. We don't have any dynamics, we don't have any rhythmical accents, and these are things we're going to add on as long with tempo changes, very small variations, in order to create something that sounds a bit more fluid, more dynamic. This is what we end up with. We position the cursor at the beginning in order to type in the tempo needed. This can be adjusted later. We then enter the volume, which is 8 bits, so it has a range between 0 and 255. To make sure everything is OK, we test it. As you can see, dynamics are entered using musical notation. The tricky bit is that in order to get a natural feel to the sequence, you have to enter quite a few dynamics. In this case, dynamics were added to every three or four notes, though in final piece this can be done to every single note. We're going to speed up the video to get them done. Notice how a wedge symbol is used to make special accents. As you'll hear now, the results are much better than the previous version. Now that we have the dynamics in place, let's add the final instrument. Navigating MSX menus can be slow and looks primitive by today's standards. Here, I am looking for an instrument inside a library called ARC-1. I created the ARC series of 65M voices in the mid-80s. The instrument I want is number 50 and is called a Xylimba. This is one of the first instruments I programmed on the 65M and which features all over the Flight Sequence album. Let's test it. You can download a modern version of these, which I ported to VoPM. Follow the included link below. It still needs some adjustments. The track is monophonic, and what you can hear is the voice stealing going on. To remedy this, we add polyphony. This gives it a more natural sound as one note elides into another. All the CX5 commands can be found in the Help menu. 
Also listening to the test, the tempo is a bit too fast, so I'm going to reduce this to 120 BPM. This final tweak should make it sound like what was intended in the original score.